Ambassador Yovanovitch, uh, I've been wondering how much of what we've seen in these last 20 days include scenes that you imagined uh, during more peaceful times when you were serving as ambassador to Ukraine? Honestly, I never imagined such a, a whole-scale invasion. When I was ambassador in Ukraine, I thought that keeping a low-level war going in the East, uh, destabilizing Ukraine in that way with cyber attacks, assassinations, disinformation, economic warfare, I thought that was sufficient for uh, Russia to realize its aims of trying to destabilize Ukraine and thwart U Ukraine's um, desires to join NATO and the EU. Uh, but uh, we saw the encirclement of Ukraine in the fall and the early winter, and the Biden administration was releasing intel the whole time about what the Russians uh, were planning. And it turns out they were absolutely right, that this is a, whole scale, a wholesale invasion of Ukraine, and um, it is a brutal war of aggression. And I have to say, even though we know what, what Putin is capable of, given his past actions, I never expected to see this in Ukraine. Well, that's exactly where I was going next, is in that job, Ambassador to Ukraine, you spend uh, part, significant parts of every day thinking about Vladimir Putin. And you had a model of his behavior in your head about the range of possibilities, what he would and wouldn't do. Um, and many of us, uh, including you, apparently, saw something like this, this kind of scenario, as so deeply irrational with no possible plan of success that, of course, he wouldn't do that. Uh, why would he do something that clearly couldn't have a path to success? Well, that that is the the, the right question to ask, and um, it's uh, it, it's it's a tough one to answer. But I think I think there are a number of different reasons. I think that during the Trump administration, uh, President Putin was getting exactly what he wanted. He could see the contempt with which Trump dealt with uh, Ukraine as just a pawn in his own personal and political uh, life. Uh, he saw. Trump's attitude toward NATO. Many, many people in the administration have said that Trump would have pulled the United, the United States out of NATO, which, of course, would have sparked the demise of, of, of NATO. So no, no need to, um, to do what he's doing now. But once Trump was uh, lost the elections and President Biden uh, took office, it was clear that it was a new day. And uh, so I think that Putin started searching for other ways to try to neutralize NATO, uh, neutralize the international order, and uh, achieve his objections of controlling Ukraine. Uh, you watched uh, President Zelensky campaign for office. You watch, watched him come into office uh, and take on a set of problems that he was facing domestically, uh, internationally. Uh, what have you learned about him in the last 20 days that you could not have known before this war? Well, I think that he has—the man has met his moment. I think that he has become a wartime president, the president that the Ukrainian people needed at this particular moment in time. He's reflecting their passion and their courage in protecting and defending Ukraine and their homeland and their families. But he is also inspiring them and uniting them. And in doing that, he is inspiring and uniting the world. I, I know in, in talking to ambassadors uh, who've served around the world that they spend the ones who are not serving in, say, the United Kingdom or France or places like that, uh, they, they spend their entire day trying to get people to pay attention to the very existence of the country uh, that they are serving in. That was part of your struggle in Ukraine. And today, to see uh, President Zelensky addressing the Canadian parliament, getting the longest uh, standing ovation there that I think that we've we've ever seen talking to Justin uh, uh, the you know Canadian Prime Minister as if as they are friends uh, this was something that was unimaginable uh, for a Ukrainian president before this 
Well, and it's good to see, and we need to, we also need to meet the moment. Ukraine is the front line of freedom right now. This is a struggle between freedom and tyranny. And we need to step up and help the Ukrainians even more than we are doing now. Our assistance, the assistance of other Western countries, is unprecedented. But given the stakes, I think we need to keep on keep everything still on the table as facts on the ground and facts in our political lives change. Uh, and I think we need to continue to rush um, security assistance to Ukraine, as well as, of course, humanitarian assistance. Time is of the essence. The Ukrainian military and um, others have fought back bravely against the uh, Russian military machine, but we need to give them every, what they need in order to continue that fight.